Now that the transfer window is closed, can we get your assessment on the business that you've managed to do? Yeah, very, very good window for us, I think. I think, uh, you know, when you set out at the start of the window, you, from my side, but very clear vision of what I wanted it to be. And it's never perfect. It's never absolutely as you want it to be. But I think from the board down, I think everyone's given their all to try and create the best squad possible. Um, I, f I found the window to be very <coughs> difficult this year. It was very long. I'm pleased it's shut and we can concentrate on the football, uh, but uh, very pleased with the squad that's left. A few departures yesterday, can we get a word on Dubravka and Fernandez? Yeah, I think both have given great service to the football club now. Martin's obviously still our player, he's on loan. Um, let's speak about Fede first, what, what an, an incredible professional, great guy. Um, can't speak highly enough of him and the contribution he's given to the football club over many years. Um, Unfortunately for us, he, he, he picked up a couple of injuries, so we didn't get to see a lot of him on the pitch. But uh, behind the scenes, he's been incredible for us, and he goes with our best wishes. And it's the same with Martin. You know, we didn't want to lose him, as I've said many times. But you have to under, understand and respect the players' wishes as well. And hopefully, it's we've come to a, uh, a situation that suits him. And uh, yeah, we have to move on without him. Mike Longstaff also left yesterday. It's important for him to go out and get some game time. Um, sort of put his stamp on things. Yeah, I think for Matty at the stage of his career that he's at, I think he needed to play, and I think he shared that need as well. So we're delighted he's he's gone to to get games and hopefully approve what a what a good player he is. Uh, injury news ahead of Crystal Palace. Any updates on Alexis Wilson, Bruno, and Sir Maximum? Yeah, so Callum's slightly behind uh, the other two, I'd say. Um, Bruno and Maxi are close. Not serious injuries. We'll wait and see whether they're fit for this week. Isaac came off with a dead leg against Liverpool. Is he going to be okay for the game? I certainly hope so. In terms of Crystal Palace, then, is it good to be back at home? You've had a little runaway. Is it good to be back at St James's Park? Then? Yeah, very good. I think the, the three away games have been testing for us in a, in a real short period of time. A lot of travelling. Um, so we're delighted to be back in front of our own our own supporters. I think the away games do test you in different ways, and with the three in quick succession. Physically, the players have, have done very, very well. I think our physical performance against Liverpool was excellent uh, and it needed to be to be competitive in the game. I think the big challenge for us is that we need to get back to that level uh, two days later, which is a challenge, but uh, one that we've done before. And uh, I think that's going to be crucial in this game. A couple of players have come into the side recently. Sean Longstaff uh, played well, had a good couple of games. He seems to be settling nicely into this squad. And he, of course, got an assist as well. Yeah, Sean's done very well uh, for me. I've been very pleased with him. Uh, he's, again, another lad that behind the scenes works at his game. Very professional. Probably with his brother um, while Matty was here, stayed stayed the latest, You know, doing everything he can to be the best player that he can be. And I think that's been reflected in his two games. I've been very pleased with him. I thought against Liverpool it was a, a step up from his performance against Wolves. I thought he defended very well um, and used the ball very well. And I think his assist is um, a really good example of that. Although playing as in a deeper position, he got higher up the pitch and played a lovely pass and, and Alex finished it off. And just one more for me. Uh, Anderson, Elliot Anderson um, is going to have a big role this year in terms of he didn't manage to bring in any extra cover in the midfield area. How big a role is he going to have? This yeah, he's going to be integral to our, our plans. Um, you can see that from the last two games where he's, he's come off the bench and contributed. So, yeah, he'll be desperate for that first start. He's pushing. Um, but I've been delighted with the progress that his, his game's made. Thank you. Thanks, Dominic. Keith? Morning, Eddie. Morning. Um, you said, I think it was last week, I can't remember when it was because there's been so many press conferences now, but uh, you said... Tell um, me about it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You did say that you were hoping to still be active in the remainder of, of the window. You obviously didn't in these last few days. How does that sit with you? Are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Look, that's the, that's the window. We were trying right up to the end of the window. Um, but sometimes things look like they're going to get done and they, they, for whatever reason, loads of different reasons why things don't happen, they didn't. So, uh, again, there's no, there's no blame attached to that. That's just the window. That's just you're dealing with other clubs, agents, players. Um, but we were actively trying to to do one or two things that would have, um, that hopefully would have made a difference for us, but as I say, they didn't happen.
four permanent signings. You didn't bring anyone in on, on loan despite having the quota there. What does that say about the way you're, you're doing things here? That's a, yeah, I, I don't quite know how to answer that because the, the loan window is, is, or the loan option is really something we looked at and we tried to utilise. So it's not like we're against loans. We certainly would have, would have done it if we felt the right player was there and the deal was possible. Um, I think permanent transfers are probably ideal. That You want players to feel part of the fabric of the club and um, really buy into everything that you're trying to do. And I think that's a lot easier, obviously, if they're your player. Um, so it wasn't on our part to not look at loans, if that makes sense. And just looking back at the window as a whole, how does it feel now, reflecting on that and realising you've brought in a, a huge talent like Alex Izak and, and broken your transfer record at the same time? Yeah, I think that is a... Uh, yeah, you have to look at that positively, you know, breaking your transfer record, you know, we set out to do, it was just about the the player and that was the cost of the player. We, lo we love Alex and we think he's going to have a huge impact here and we had to go with the demands of the of the market on that one. But um, I think it shows that the, we've been backed by the, by the board and they've really uh, helped us with that signing and that's a great thing for us. What's Alex been like around the place, just from the little bits that we've seen? It looks like he's settled in really well and the players have taken to him. Yeah, I think the players have taken to him. I think he's, he's at the moment, he's quite quiet and he's going about his business in a, a very professional way. He's very focused. He's asking questions. He's inquisitive about how uh, we want to play and, and what's required of him, but in a, in a very good way. So, no, he's, he's been excellent. Um, and I think that showed in his performance. I think his performance was one of... Um, a really good tactical understanding in a very short time to deliver what we wanted him to do and then he showed his ability and uh, the second goal especially I thought was an incredible goal okay it wasn't given but um, that'd be a huge frustration for him because I thought it was a magnificent bit of play You were very calm after the match at Anfield on, on Wednesday I know the first thing you, you try to do is re-watch the game um, now that you have and, and watch the incidents at the end and the, the added time how do, you, how do you look back on that and yeah, saying I was very calm after, I'm not sure that's as maybe you look calm. Yeah, may maybe calm externally, but I think in internally there's a whole range of emotions going through your body at that time. I think it's my job then to address the media and gather my thoughts very quickly and then put myself in a different place where I have to respond to the questions that I'm asked. I think from my own mind I was revisiting and in my head that last couple of minutes of the game and I think I was that night to be honest it never went away even when I was re-watching it it was yeah sort of just from the team's perspective we didn't get that last couple of minutes right and when you consider how well we managed the rest of the game it's a huge frustration because uh, the game was there for us to take something from it and we didn't and we have to look at ourselves I'm not going to sit here and blame the referee for the time played that's someone else's job to do uh, mine is to coach and manage the team and we needed to manage that last bit better. So you weren't sitting watching about with a stop watch in your hand then? <laughs> no, I, I, that's, that, that's a waste of my energy. Uh, my job is to show the clips to the players that how we could have managed that last part better. And just finally on, on how the team looks now moving forward, you mentioned the injury to, to Bruno and St Maximum not being too serious. When you think about how strong the starting eleven can be moving forward when everyone's fit, how much does, does that please you? Yeah, it's exciting what, what can be when everyone's fit and available and I include John, Joe and Emil in that the squad is very strong. Um, at the moment we're, we're slightly stretched and we're, we're hoping that those players can come back and make a real difference. Um, but that's part of the season, that's, that, that, that will be part of everybody's season. You can see the amount of injuries around the Premier League at the moment are is very high and that's down to the number of games we're having. So um, we hope to get through this last game. Um, the Crystal Palace game with uh, no fresh injuries and then hopefully with the free week we can um, get a full quota again. Thanks, Eddie. Morning, Eddie. Morning. Um, with the way the game ended on Wednesday and, of course, it being transfer deadline day, roughly how many hours sleep have you lost in the last 48 hours? No, I haven't lost any sleep. Um, I think, as I say, the mental energy that you uh, use is is very high at this moment because you're... There's loads of different thoughts and emotions going through your body. Now, the transfer window is an ex extremely um, uh, busy period where you're congesting a lot of watching of players and analysing of players into a short period of time and then de dealing with all the other stuff. So that's why I'm pleased from a coaching perspective it's out of the way. And now it's purely the football and purely the teams we're playing against and purely about make, getting the best out of the group we have. And, and that's a great thing for me. 
I saw some supporters kind of see the team being booed off at Anfield and take that as a bit of a compliment almost, that the top two are now starting to notice Newcastle and, dare I say, be a little bit rattled by Newcastle United. What's your kind of take on that? I don't really have any emotion about being booed off, or you know, certainly we don't by the opposition. We don't want to be clapped off. That that, that is for sure. In a, in a sort of sympathetic sense, I think we're here to compete and to win. No other um, part of me thinks anything different. So how that's perceived by other people has got no relevance to me. It's about making sure when we we walk off the pitch as a group, we're we're proud of our efforts. Really, I think that's the that's the thing I always judge us on. Nick Pope in the first half, he went down quite early and he looked like he was, he was struggling, maybe feeling a bit unwell. How, how's he doing? Yeah, Nick's fine. Um, going on to, obviously, the transfer window, I'm sure you're glad to see the back of it, but come the third, of the 1st of January, if you'd have been told that you would have had a spine of a team that could have included the likes of Nick Pope, Sven Botman, Bruno Gimaraes, Alexander Izak, how would you have reacted to that ahead of the two transfer windows? <laughs> it's desert. Very tough one to ask, I think, or answer, sorry. Um, I think from my position at that moment, um, looking back, we were in the middle of a relegation battle. So I think my only focus was on that. I don't think you can ever propel yourself forward. But certainly now with that squad, the, the core of the squad, as you, you're talking about, we've got a very good base to build from. And those players are going to be a very important part of our future. I know Ahmed Agadusi said a few times on social media that you know patience is a virtue when it comes to building a squad, to adding in a transfer market. How much is it down to patience when it comes down to building this squad across time and, and across transfer windows as well? Yeah, I think that is a very good point because I think a squad is never built in one transfer window. I know everyone sort of these days wants the quickest fix possible as in they want the squad to be built and perfect in in one window and, and of course that's what I wish but it does take time um, and your squad is never perfect because even every transfer window you're always looking to make adjustments and to improve things so we're very pleased with where we are now January again might look different and then next summer might look different but you can only work at what you have and of course you have to work within the budget system, and that's Something we've tried to try to do. Obviously, prices have been sky high this summer. Incredibly tough um, to try and keep your um, transfer spend under control. And just finally, from me on Crystal Palace, given the the kind of frustrations on Wednesday, the potential home debut of Alexander Isak, how much are you expecting the atmosphere to be even more fervent inside of St James's if that's possible against a, a very very good Crystal Palace side? As we said, yeah, Crystal Palace has done very well this this season. They've had a tough fixture list themselves they've had some tough games as we have and they've managed themselves well through those tough encounters um, yeah I expect St James's Park to be rocking again I think the the Anfield experience at the end there hopefully will get the crowd into the game for minute one mm. um, and certainly I want to see a positive reaction from my team from, from what happened thanks Eddie thank you just um, a couple of questions on Isaac. I know that you've talked in the past about players coming together and talking a bit about their journey and so on. Has he had that opportunity to talk about his background to the other players yet? Not yet, no. Um, it's, a, it's a random process. So it's a name out of the hat and the next one will speak. So who knows when his, his time will come, but I look forward to it when it comes. You talked about how well he adapted tactically at Liverpool. Did it almost take you by surprise just how well he performed in that game? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't say it took me by surprise because I've seen lots of him. Um, obviously not with my own eyes in live, but I've seen lots of him. And uh, no, it didn't surprise me. His, his characteristics and his individual skills are there. Uh, what impressed me most was just how he had, uh, took on the information that we gave him and implemented that as more off the ball, really, than, than on the ball. On the ball, he will always be himself. And yeah, he's got some great talent. And you said he asked a lot of questions. Do you, do you like players that, that come to you with, with lots of questions about what you're trying to do? Um, oof. Not always. <laughs> no. <laughs> what are you doing, Eddie? Yeah, that's right. No, I, I think you want players to be involved in the process. You want them to be involved in their career. You want them to, to be active. It's not, it can't just be about me giving them information all the time. It's got to be about them giving something back. And I'm certainly open to that and want that. It's a two-way thing, um, so uh, when players respond and have their own ideas, I'm, I'm only too keen to listen. 
we've talked about coming back to St James's. I mean, we've talked a lot about the transformation on the pitch, but also that there's been a transformation inside the ground as well. How important do you think Fortress St James's is going to be to your project? I think it's absolutely massive. I think your home form has to be the bedrock of your success. You have to make it a very difficult place for opposing teams to come. Hopefully we're on the way to do it, but you have to earn the right every week to sort of say that. And uh, the crowd so far have embraced everything that uh, the players have given, and we need that to continue. And just a word about Palace. Do you see them as one of the teams that are maybe kind of on par with you? One of the teams that you're going to be fighting it out for, perhaps just in that top half of the Premier League, pushing up? Time will tell. Time will tell for both of us. I think it's far too early to, to make massive statements at this stage of the season. The league's still forming. There's a, there's a long way to go. Thank you. Chris Conway. Hi, Eddie. Uh, Hi. Just in terms of, of transfers and, and moving forward, um, you appreciate you probably don't want to think about the next transfer window already, but with this one just gone, it seems as if you targeted specific players for specific positions, but how important will it be to future success that you look to develop the squad going forward? Yeah, we're, we're always looking to develop the squad. It's not just about the, the starting eleven; it's about strength and depth. Um, also key to that is the developing our own players. So supplementing the squad with um, players that are coming through the academy, I think that's vitally important that we improve that aspect of what we're doing as well. Uh, we want to try and supplement the players that we, we have to sign for transfer fees with with the younger guys from, from our own club. So the likes of Elliot and other players that will come through that journey are so, so important to the, the building of the squad. And just a um, question for our digital audience. Um, Sam Fender has announced a gig at St James's Park next summer, this morning. I wonder whether you know what you make of that. Are you a fan? I am. I was actually listening to him this morning in the gym uh, and I did compliment him on his voice. It's, in, it's incredible. So I didn't know about that, that concert. I'll try and be there depending on my own schedule. Okay, thanks, broadcasters. Craig? Uh, it depends when Paul, Paul Hartley, basically, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure they're planning a tour, Craig. Uh, they've got a new album coming out, but uh, I'll give that a little plug, so I don't know. Was that cancelled, the concert you were going to go to? It was absolutely devastated. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't believe it, would you? I think they've cancelled three or four concerts in. Uh, in like 30 years and unfortunately that was one of them. Yeah. Those weren't the questions. But, uh, <laughs> I could carry on if you want. <laughs> will, uh, will you be making a complaint or asking for guidance from the PGMOL as to the stoppage time? Uh, uh, probably not in honesty because I think it's a fruitless exercise. I don't think we'll get any benefit from it. Uh, I much prefer to put my energy into something positive and more worthwhile and that'll always be with my players so uh, yeah I, I've been there many times and I, I just don't think you get the the reward for your efforts in that sense. What are your thoughts on it? Did, do you think it wasn't fair? Or did you understand it? Or you... No I thought I thought the game should have ended probably with our last attack um, looking at the time and having uh, gone back through it I think when Jolinton skips to the byline and puts a cross in and we, we have that last attacking action I think that's time I think that's that's the moment to end the game. Um, he obviously didn't, and yeah. Last one from me. On the, so we've spoken a lot about FFP this summer, uh, and I think the club has probably spent more than we perhaps expected. Have future budgets been pulled in, and where are you left that from an FFP perspective? Do you think? Yeah, I think uh, that's a good question. I think FFP definitely was a big uh, hurdle for us to to deal with this this transfer window. I think we. We've gone over um, the guidelines given, um, but I think, yeah, I'm not sure whether it's affected future future budgets. That's probably not for me to answer, but certainly um, it was a hurdle for us, and we yeah we have slightly exceeded where we wanted to be. David, maybe just building on something, Craig asked that you do as a club seem to have ruffled a few feathers in the first few weeks of the season. Do you think you're being regarded differently in the game? Uh, that's a difficult one for me to answer as, as Newcastle manager. I, I don't know. Um, we're just being, trying to be very competitive. We're trying to play our way. Uh, we don't want to lie down and accept anything. We want to fight for every point, every tackle. If that's unpopular with people If you know, and do everything we can to win, then so be it. But we'll continue to uh, 
hopefully um, play in the way that uh, we all see that we should. We, we've got to fight for everything. It sounds like Amanda and Ned have an interesting visit. Were you aware of what they No, I wasn't aware. Um, not until this morning, actually. So um, certainly wish both of them well and hope they're OK. Um, yeah, I think safety of every supporter, every person coming to the game is absolutely paramount. It, it sounded like it could have been very different. So my thoughts are with anyone that was, was hurt in the incident. Thank you. Uh, morning, Eddie. Similar theme to with Damien's opening question there. Uh, you're well aware of Newcastle's past history and Kevin Keegan's entertainers, the nation's second favourite team, probably the same with Bobby's team. Do you think now it's possible, because you, you're someone who preaches attacking football, for Newcastle to get in that position, or do you think that because of these, this label of the wealthiest club in the world, the controversial source of the wealth, Newcastle are, are destined to be unpopular <coughs> elsewhere? Is it, is, does that mean anything to you? So that's, again, that's a difficult one for me to answer because I can't speak on other people's opinions of us. All I can try and do is produce a team that our supporters and everyone internally are proud of. So yes, we do want to play attacking football. We want to play yeah. aggressive football. We want our, uh, our supporters to come to the games entertained, getting value for money. Um, their time supporting the team is, is worthwhile. I want them to be proud of what they see. So that they're things that I'm trying to focus on and build. Outside of Newcastle, what people think of us, that's not my concern. But as I say, you know, 30 years ago, the Keegan side was, it was almost unique, wasn't it? Because, because it was loved by people who weren't uh, tribal. Yeah, I think there was a lot of respect for the style of football and th certainly the flair and the attacking nature of the team was yeah was widely respected and, and rightly so. Um, but I'm sure the managers then that were building those teams didn't necessarily think of outside perception. They were just trying to build the team that they thought was the right one to be successful and that's what I'll try and do as well. Thanks, Oscar. Eddie, on, on uh, Isak, he said uh, a couple of press conferences ago that he, he's been through a lot for a young, a young man. Um, are you able to elaborate on that? Well, I think it's just his, his career experiences. He's travelled. Um, we're not signing a player from, who's only played in one league. Um, and I think that will help us in um, hopefully converting him to the, the Premier League as quickly as possible. So his early experiences, he's, as I said, he played in Germany, Holland, Spain, and now the Premier League. So he's had, he's had those career experiences and life experiences. That will help him settle in Newcastle because he's been through it before. So that's what I meant by that. Do you, get, do you get the impression he's naturally a quiet person or is that just part of settling in? No, I think, I think he's, he's quite naturally quiet. I think everyone's character is, is there. And then obviously through time, I think you see different, um, different aspects of everyone's personality. But I think he'll fit really well into the group that we have. I think the players have, as I said, have really taken to him. I think they've enjoyed his, his company. I think they've enjoyed his performance the other night as well. And I think that's so important to help him settle that the lads and the players around him see see his value. Um, so, yeah, it's all good so far. He's a tall player, but not necessarily known for his heading ability. Is that, is that unfair? Is he, is he good in the air? Um, I think he's capable in the air. He scored goals in, in the air. I don't, I don't, yes, for somebody who's six foot three, six foot four, he's not necessarily um, going to be uh, crosses or headers are going to be his, necessarily his trademark, but it is something in his game that I think he can improve. But I think it is um, a potential strength. But I think he's more about the, the technical side and the sort of probably his, his two goals highlight his strengths. Um, although one didn't count, I think that's him. That's him at his best. Luke? Um, a difficult one to start. Um, there have been some accusations, mainly from Merseyside, that you were deliberately time-wasting um, in the game on Wednesday. And some, some, some things said after the game as well by people connected with the football club. How do you respond to that? I, I presume you refute it. Yeah, of course we refute it. I think if you look at just the pure physical side we had one day less recovery and then we're playing at Anfield and our players gave everything physically in the game so we had Matt Target hadn't played um, a lot of football in the build-up to the game I think he went down with cramp Jolinton went down feeling his, his ribs and had cramp as well um, so I think it's all down to the, the, the preparation time that we had um, Liverpool had an extra day um, and of course the, the, the conditions of the game I think it was a little bit bitty in the second half with subs, etc. But there's certainly no gamesmanship on our side. That's just the, the way the game went. 
And is it, there's been some suggestion in some of the stuff written today that you found it quite difficult to get domestic clubs to deal with you this summer. Is that true? Um, yeah, Would I'd say so. A yeah, I'd say so. I'd, I'd say that that is definitely um, something we felt in the market. Uh, domestic clubs didn't really want to be seen to be helping us. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll have to take that. That's part of where we are at the moment. Just finally, Elliot Anderson, I know you've been really impressed with him in pre-season. I know it's always a bit of a cliche when a window shuts, so I'm going to ask the cliche question. But it is, it is a bit like having a new signing for you, because uh, probably in May, you probably didn't think he would be part of your first team. Yeah, I agree with that. I think he is. He's, he's exciting. I think, um, again, the players really like him. I think they've seen his ability for probably a while. He's now developed from his loan spell. I think he's developed an, uh, layers to his game. He's come back a more polished player. And I think he's ready to contribute for us. So that's a great thing. And as I said earlier, the more players we can bring through the system, it saves us a lot of money on transfer fees. And it's something I'd openly embrace and I want. So hopefully we can find some more. Thank you. Martin? Uh, you come back to Luke's point there. The accusation from Liverpool's bench and players seem to be that you brought the game up deliberately a little bit too much. How would you react to that? Uh, that's that's their opinion. I'm, I'm not concerned by their opinion. We know what we were trying to do. We were trying to win the game. I thought, as I said, uh, given the reasons why there was perhaps a couple of stoppages from our perspective, I think Nick Pope went down twice. First time he was feeling a little bit dizzy. Um, second time I think he fell on his back. Not sure there's a lot we can do there. And is that style of play the, the way to stop the Liverpools and Manchester City at home? Which other teams are having trouble to do at the moment? I think there's many ways to try and to try and do that. I think uh, first and foremost you have to you have to perform well defensively. I thought we did. I thought defensively we were excellent. Um, we limited them really. They had a couple of half chances, um, a couple of moments in the game where they opened us up, but minimal for the for Liverpool's normal probably rhythm at home. And I have to compliment our players on that. Yes, we conceded two goals that probably. Yeah, we, we all look back on now and think we could have done better with those two incidents, but uh, we're playing against an elite team and there's still growth for us. And is there a little bit more detail again on what Luke said about clubs not being particularly happy to deal with you in the summer? Is there more detail on that? No, I, I don't think I, I can go into necessarily details of deals and things, but I think we, we've certainly found it's there's no one there ready to do us a favour. Um, it's It's... The narrative, I think, regarding us uh, has changed. I think if if there's anything domestically, teams will uh, will put their price up if it's Newcastle. But I think that's the same around the world, and that's something we're we're having to deal with. And that's why we've walked away from a, a few deals because I think it's important that we're not seen as that club that will will pay what's asked. Yeah, I think it has to be fair. And has that brought the club closer together? Um, I think that's a difficult one on transfers to, to say it's brought us closer together. I think. In, against yeah, but I think that I think the most important thing in terms of being together is the players and the staff and everything that goes on here at the training ground. I would say we couldn't be more together at the moment. I think there's a real feeling of uh, of us internally knowing that we're against everybody else, um, and I, I, that's healthy, and I'd embrace that. Is it, sorry, last one. Then. Is, it, is the element of injury time that's frustrating that? Joe Linton maybe scores to the corner flag instead of trying to score the winning goal. Is that very hard? <clears throat> I can't criticise Joe, Joe for wanting to win the game. And I, I, I want that attitude. Uh, if he'd have gone to the corner uh, the, you know, and got tackled and the other, you know, the, the result's still been the same, I think we'd have said, well, why didn't he go for goal? So I don't think you can ever rewrite the game. The attitude is we want to win. So I'd say to Joe, well done. Okay, Kieran, any emotions were running high at the two benches at the end of the game? The night. Have you seen those pictures back? Um, what did you make of them? I haven't seen the pictures back of, of the two benches, no. Um, I think immediately when the goal went in, I took myself somewhere else mentally. Um, I don't know where I went, but I, I, <laughs> I went somewhere dark. Um, <laughs> So no, I, I always try and stay out of those flashpoints for me, um, unless I feel I, I need to be to be there for my team and for my staff. Um, but I think emotions were running high, and I think that's the beauty of the Premier League. So I have no issue with my bench protecting themselves um, as part of the game. Okay.
think with transfers at this level, do people around you have to start looking ahead to 2023 already? Is, is planning already starting for, for those windows? Very much so, yeah. I mean, the planning that all transfers take and all windows take, take on a new level these days. So yes, we're already planning for January next summer. Obviously not me, me personally at this stage. I'm focusing on Crystal Palace, but yeah, the work started. We know what we need. Um, so yeah, a lot of work ahead. Chris? Morning, Eddie. You Morning. mentioned injuries across the Premier League. I mean, you've got a couple in midfield. Liverpool have got several in midfield. The likes of Joe Linton and Joe Willock, the, the physical expenditure of them. How much of a concern is it during this really hectic period that the players are going to be pushed to, to the very limit? Yeah, I think this is the this is the time, and that this comes with the World Cup. I think the congested schedule uh, really does put the bodies of the players under stress, and be at that point where. You know they're giving it. You could see the other day with Joe, the two Joes, as you mentioned, the, the and Sean, the the distance they covered at the speed that they covered it was was incredible. We needed to do that to keep with Liverpool. And you saw Jordan Henderson got injured in that game, and that's just yeah, that's just the game. I don't think there's a lot you can do about it. But I think all clubs are going to pick up a number of injuries this year. It's about trying to minimise those. And and when your players do get injured, I think the key thing is is treating them correctly and getting them back on the pitch in a safe safe way. And I think. Uh, hopefully we can manage those situations well. And in terms of Joe Linton, obviously you, you said he was a player you liked before he came in here, you didn't see him necessarily as a midfielder, but how he's developed into the player that he is, looking back on the window and, and the other positions you're looking to strengthen, prices in the market, how much of is it that you have a player like him who's almost unique in what he can, he can offer in that midfield? Yeah, I think he's, um, he's a very special player. Uh, not many players, I think, that can play the number of positions that he can, and I think that flexibility in your squad is absolutely crucial in a season like this. So we do have a number of players that can fill in different positions. That's going to be crucial. We're going to need that. Um, but Joe has developed into a very, uh, a very special player with unique characteristics that we really rely on. So um, I think he's in a really good place. Okay, Lee and then Simon. Anyway, at, what, at what stage last night did you know you were done business? Probably about seven o'clock, I think. Seven o'clock. So you didn't get sort of full in the drama of it watching. Sky. No, 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 no. I wasn't in the in the drama of it. I was uh, I was watching the the Leicester Manchester United game actually, uh, knowing that our business was done. Uh, we were we were trying on a couple of deals um, yesterday morning. Um, we were hopeful to get one done, and then it fell away about yeah, it's about six half six seven o'clock. Okay, is that the guy from West Ham? What's coming up? Um, yeah, I won't, I won't divulge. Okay, and just on some of the other targets, um, we understand that some of the players that you were trying to get uh, wanted the move, but then other things, finances, maybe took it away from that. Do you feel sorry for some of the players who've been denied that move? I mean, Pedro's probably a name that people are talking about. I think, yeah, I think the transfer window is, is unsettling for not just for, for us working behind the scenes, but it's unsettling for the players. And I think there'd be a couple of players in our squad that were probably felt the same, um, where potentially things might happen and then it doesn't. And then they have to regroup and refocus on, on the club that they're at and then give their best again. So I don't think any players are unique to that. I think that would be a, a thing that would be happening up and down the country. The transfer window does uh, obviously it entertains everybody, but for the players it can be very unsettling. I think the challenge for those players though then is to yeah, refocus so the, the, the actual gap between the windows now is very short, so January will be here before we know it. Um, so you've just got to focus on that period now and, and double down on your work. Yeah, but just finally, how, how important is it to, to move on from Anfield this weekend and forget about all the whatever, injustice, whatever you want to look at it. Yeah, I think very, very important. There's no hangover from our perspective. So we had, we've seen the two sides in football. We've seen the Wolves game where we scored late and then we've gone to Anfield and we've had one go against us the other way. It's part of the game. It happens. What you can't let it do is affect your next game. So we're determined to um, go to Crystal Palace in a, in a very positive frame of mind and try and attack the game. Simon? Yeah, and you've, you've rattled Man City this year. You've seen your players properly abused by the, the Anfield crowd as they've walked off. You mentioned teams not wanting to deal with you this year. Is that is that like a compliment to where the club's going now and that you're probably on the map more now, you, you, you're more contenders? And do you care if the club's popular or not? 
Um, ooh, do I care if the club's popular? Yeah, I care if the the club's seen in, and the team's seen in the right way, as in that we behave in the right way, that we conduct ourselves right. We we play the game hard, but we play the game fair. I think those those values are important to me. Um, but outside of that, that's all I can control. Outside of that, other people's perceptions, as I said earlier, it's very difficult for me to to form an opinion on. Yeah, if other people's perceptions are that Newcastle are contenders again, you're probably going to get more of that tribal kind of abuse in, in, in the territory. Well, I'll take that if we are contenders, but we have that all to prove. So, as I said earlier, we're so early into the season. Um, we need to elevate ourselves in terms of points and league status to make sure that we are seen as that. And then if that makes us unpopular, I'll take it. But, yeah, we have to earn that right.